we're turning Wednesday into a destination because we get a chance to talk to one of the greatest columnists of all time. He, he himself agreed Mount Rushmore is, is, yes. is where he belongs and maybe even have an empty space there. Not not nearly not four people, maybe three, and just a nice space, you know, next to his face. But we have him right now on the K show, Mike Lupica. Mike, how are you? Hey, Michael. I was thinking, you know, I mean, it's premature to talk about two spaces on on Mount Rushmore, obviously, <laughs> but maybe just, this is just something to think about going forward. Okay, maybe they could do it like a mug shot, you know, be facing forward and then me in profile. Oh, you know, that's not a bad idea. That, that is a thought. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, but unfortunately, it looks kind of like a monument-sized mugshot. Well, he just said that. Yeah, he wants that. That's, yeah, that's, that's what monument I just said, Don. Size, I'm sorry. So this is the way oh. it was working with you. Because <laughs> oh, you just right. did not listen to right. what I said. No, no, you never but, listened. But it, it, no, you know, well, this is why, no, this is why I, I mean, want him on the show. And you would think that with all the time you were talking, I'd listen a little bit. Oh. Bad job. <laughs> wow, going back at our, our yeah. guest. He's not a guest well, now. Well, it's his show. He's, it's he's, the Mike Lupica show. Yeah, it, it is, and this is now, he's, he now has his own segment. So, uh, <laughs> Mike, you, you, were, you were right in the middle of 94. Does this remind you of it at all? Yeah, it does, Michael, except it's an even better time because of the way the Yankees are playing. So we've added baseball uh, into the mix right now. But, uh, Mike, I can remember um, flying to Vancouver for the night for game six on a Saturday because that could have been the night when the mm -hmm. Rangers won the Stanley Cup, taking the, taking the red eye back through Toronto because the Knicks were playing at the Garden the next afternoon. The next afternoon, it was an, just an extraordinary time where you just felt like all life in the city w was running through Madison Square Garden. And, and, and you remember, after Knicks or Rangers games, if one of the others was playing, people would stay in the arena and they would put the game on the big mm. board. Oh man, now pretty incredible stuff. Now, now as somebody that lived through that, Mike, it's so easy to look back at Messier and Leach and Graves and Richter and all those guys and hold them up in high regard because they eventually won. But from a pure scar power, leave Messier aside because we knew what he was before he got here. Can Kreider, Zabanajad, Panarin, Igor Shosturkin, could you make the case that they're, even though they haven't won yet, that from a star power standpoint, they might be as bright if not brighter? Yeah, I, Don, if they win. I mean, yeah. th th you know that 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 elevates everything uh, uh, around here. You know, we we haven't had a lot of winning in any of the major sports for quite some time. I mean, the Giants were the last team that that won. I'm not, uh, and I'm not dismissing uh, uh, soccer, but you know what I mean. And mm -hmm. yeah, if you win, I mean, I went back and looked today, and and back at the 1970 uh, NBA Finals. Okay, because I, I want to use that as a reference point for something in in a minute. Okay. Willis played great till he got hurt. Dick Barnett played great. You know they, they, that was, they had Hall of Famers just about at every position on that team. But even with all of that, they needed the, the, they needed the epic drama of Game Seven, and they needed the Knicks' first championship. And then, of course, they did it again three years later. And so, winning changes everything. Oh, oh no! I thought it was a Don just banged on him. You think Don did, Don did that on I purpose? Don power. did. I don't have the power. Wow, Don, I know that's... better than that. He could have me killed. <laughs> he really could. You think so? Luke and he has... might. Wow. You don't know the power of Lupica. He might be the most powerful person I've ever worked with. Now, really? It's all relative. I mean, I don't know what kind of power the media has anymore, but you know what I'm saying, Michael. He's, a, he's not nobody. No, he's no. He's somebody. He, he could have you killed if you actually did that. Hi, Mike. You're back. Mike, didn't you used to talk about the wave of the hand? Was yes. It, you know, when Mike would wave the hand, you were out of the business. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> and, we're, we're all very, and you know what? We're all very fortunate to still be. Because <laughs> there are some that okay. are no longer so, here. Um, um, as, I was, as, I was, as I was saying, you, the, all of those Hall of Famers on the Knicks of, of, of that time, okay, which is why there is as much romance attached to them as, as any team that's ever played. It, it, it's a similar romance to, like, the 98 Yankees and Tories Yankees. But winning changes everything, especially 
in in New York. And and so if this Rangers team does this and they do it 30 years after, you know, it, it won't be 1940 to 1994, but it feels like that mm-hmm. to Rangers. No, it's this is this is tremendous what's going on because we talked about this I think last week. This is, to me, one of the most appealing Knicks teams, for example, of all time. And, I'll, Don, I will tell you this. I stayed up and I watched the second overtime last night of, of the Rangers because you know how passionate I am about <laughs> hockey. And, um, and, and the minute they whistled that penalty, I, I knew the game was over. I knew that they were going to send out all the heavy hitters. They were going to score and they were going to go ahead two games to none. And that's exactly what happened. Now, I, I agree with Jeff Van Gundy that comparison is, you know, is a thief of joy, especially comparing errors. But we've been talking about this a lot in the last week or so. Is Jalen Brunson the best Nick since Patrick Ewing? Oh, without question. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it, the, 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 you talk about my, for all of the great players, and I'm not dismissing Willis or Dave, my friend Dave DeBusher or Bill Bradley or anybody, okay? There's three guys that I think have separated themselves from the other, and that is Clyde, um, Patrick, and Jalen Brunson. And, I'm like, and, and, guys, I will go one step further. What Jalen Brunson is doing right now is as great a postseason performance as I have ever seen in any sport while I've been covering sports in, in New York City. What what he's doing on a nightly basis feels like it, it's Reggie's three, except it's every night, okay? Mm-hmm. It's it's Phil Sims against the Broncos, except it's every night. It's, it's Strahan and Tuck and what they did to Brady, except it's every night. And this is a guy who's listed at 6'2". Uh, yeah, right, good one. Um, the whole game runs through his hands. And he is doing this on on a nightly basis. And it is, uh, you know, here's the thing about Clyde, okay? The, the, you know, the greatest single game we had ever seen uh, or, or heard about was obviously Game 7. Willis limps out and makes two shots. But as you know, Clyde goes for 36, 19, and 7 that night. It's the greatest game of his life. And people still call it the Willis Reed game, okay? For that series, though... Clyde, I think, averaged 17 points in 10 assists. He, he was having a perfectly good series. He was like their fourth leading scorer. Willis mm-hmm. was their leading scorer before he got hurt. What this kid is doing is is like Jeter's best October. I mean, you know, Jeter's first October mm-hmm. in 96, he got he had 22 hits. And, and everybody remembers A-Rod in 2009, except Derek actually hit 400 in two of those series and had another 22 hits. Mickey had like one 400 World Series. Mm -hmm. What we are seeing is somebody performing under the biggest possible spotlight and, you know, the, the old Dizzy Gillespie jazz man line, the professional is the one who can do it again. Well, he keeps doing it again and again and again. The only one we came up with other than A-Rod was uh, 2015 Daniel Murphy, those first couple of rounds. Yes, yes, where you they, they, they couldn't get him out. And obviously, I'm, and I'm, I'm not excluding... Bernard King. Bernard King that in '84. That was an uh, you know I saw all those games. It was an unbelievable thing. Okay, but what this kid this kid has made himself over these seven games. He's as big a star as there is in his sport. He's playing for his team the way Anthony Edwards is playing for his team. The way Shea Gildas Alexander is playing for 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 the Oklahoma City Thunder. I, I I again to put it in perspective, I've never seen a better postseason performance by anybody in town than what we're seeing on a nightly basis for this kid. Now you've you've been lucky enough. And we've been lucky enough that you've been there at, at every big venue in this country for every big sporting event. How different is the Garden, Mike, in, on nights like that? Well, Michael, it's funny. You know, um, uh, it, it, it is different. It, it, but it's, it's, it's different because we think it's different. I mean, there's a sound, you know, the, the Boston Garden when the, the Celtics are going good is, it gets pretty loud. I, I, I think there is a combination of there's one thing that goes into this right now at the garden that, that you get in other places, but it's, it's, it's more sustainable in New York. And that's wanting. You can hear, you can hear how much Nick fans want this. 
okay? You can hear how much Rangers fans want this. It's excitement. It's drama. It's, it's, it's close games. It's, it's all of that stuff. The Rangers have played two close games against Carolina. The, the Knicks seem to play a life-and-death game every single night. But now you factor in that the Knicks haven't won in a half a century. And I'm not just saying they're going to win this year, but you know what? They, if they end up against the Celtics, I mean, think about this, by the way. I'm sure you guys have talked about this. We, we may be looking at two New York Boston series. Yep. Huh? Yeah. I mean, you, that'll be 19, guys, that'll be 1994 on steroids. Yeah, that, that is a whole different level. Uh, now, uh, a team that we assumed we'd be seeing in the finals, whoever gets there, was the Denver Nuggets. Mike, you've been around wow. a long time. Can you think of another time where a team that was seemingly so great when they finally faced a real challenge kind of melted the way the Nuggets seem like they're melting? John, I have been searching my memory, okay? And, I, and I'm sure I'm going to forget um, um, some stuff, too, okay? But I remember one year back, in, I think it was a, when Rick Barry's... Um, Warriors swept the bullets when the bullets looked like the baddest men on the planet. Okay, and they just they just were never in the series. When that game was nearly thirty points in Game Two at halftime, and and if you guys watch the game, you know this. You started to wonder if the defending champs could get the ball over half court. Yeah, I mean they, they looked like one of my old rec league basketball teams. Okay, and and that's how bad it was. This to me. Is it, it, the, the Knicks are a great story. There's so many great stories going on right now. Okay, the, the, the Minnesota has made themselves into a great story. But to me, the headline of the, the postseason in the NBA right now is what has happened to, to the Denver Nuggets. Because guys, we thought they were going to roll. I yep. mean, we did. You know, I, I, I put me down as not knowing how good Minnesota was. Okay, I, I kind of have been interested in the, the Thunder all year, but this this is. This this has been a stunning turn of events. Now, Mike, before we let you go, I know sometimes you like to test me and test your theory. So, Don and Peter, Mike has always said that you could text me during a game and I'll answer <laughs> between C and Y. Yeah. All right, so last Wednesday, Mike was on. And, like, he's off, he's off at, like, 10 to 5. He waits until 7.30 to text me and go, that was fun. Just to see if I would text him back, and I did. Was that a little Mike Lupica test? Is that what you were doing? I'm, I'm not particularly proud of the fact that that happens to be true. <laughs> the, 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 the normal thing, you know, I, I had a good time. I'm glad we're going to be doing this going forward. The normal thing would be to wait till the first commercial after I've gone off. Right. And, 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 and thank, and, but I, I did wait, and... and I, <laughs> This is a sign of personal growth, okay? I, I did, it wasn't a particularly dramatic point in the game when I texted you back, okay? So, I, I mean, I don't want you to pat me on the back for that, but I, I should get some credit. It wasn't like bases loaded, nobody out for the Yankees. I just knew that's what you were doing. I knew it. Wow. I know you too well. I said, he's testing me yeah. to see if I still answer back during a game. And you passed, right? I passed. I passed. And how about this? How about you know this? What? Go ahead, Mike. Why? No, Why? no, you go, you go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, I, I, hit, I hit Cone once in a while, too, but he's not as easy a mark as you are, Michael. <laughs> I was just going to say, how's this, um, Mike? This, this predates my time at the radio station, but just to make you feel old, how do you feel that your former great producer, Andrew Gunling, turned 40 years old last week? Oh, my God. You know, you guys, you, you, you want me to do this every Wednesday, but if you're going to be mean, I, 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 I'm full of I, I No, if, if she, she, Michael, this is what it was like. He seems like, I mean, other than when he goes off on one of those tangents, John seems like such a nice guy. No, that was you know, Peter just like nice that, was, that, that, was that was Peter. Oh, Peter. He's not yeah. nice Peter. either. Oh, wait a minute, Peter. You know what? I, you, Peter asked the I know you uh, nugget question. <laughs> Peter, yeah. I know that you had misgivings about me way back when I first went off. Because I, 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 Michael, there he, he, he was a little snarky about me, wasn't he? Yeah. And then I think, I think I won I him over. You really yeah. did. You, re I, you really, there's something. No, it's, it's your personality as a guest I find to be incredibly endearing. I don't know. When I used to listen to you as a listener, sometimes I would get annoyed with you. As we, you know, as we all have relationships, as there are people getting annoyed with me right now as I speak. <laughs> but then getting to know you on the show, I, it was my idea to have you as a weekly. I yeah, think after you were on that 
first time, uh, Peter texts me. He goes, he has to be on every week. He's phenomenal. He's your delight. What can I say? I'll tell you what, okay. I, I rarely, in the same conversation... Tim described as being endearing and delightful. So this, this is a good day for me. This is a really, really good day for me. I think you could tell Taylor that, and she won't believe it. <laughs> Taylor doesn't think I'm either. Come on. I know. She's a saint, the woman. Anyway, Mike, this is oh, fun. I, you know and what? I'll, Here's, I'll get a text I'll from you in the this. third inning, right? Okay, I'm just going to tell you what Parcel always has told me, okay? That someday, when Taylor goes up to heaven, God will be waiting for her and say, Oh, you come right in, dear. <laughs> Boy, is Parcel's right. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Okay, guys, this is a blast. Bye All right, John. That's Mike Lupica. Now, I got to tell you. I guess Don and I sound similar. Yeah, he, 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 yeah. That's happened twice today, though. I, I, I think you and I sound more similar than, than we realize, maybe. Really? Maybe. Because Joel, uh, uh, I asked the question, and he said Peter. Yeah, yeah. it was weird. It One used to be days. that Parcells would just say Michael all the time. Here you go. Look, look at this happen. How detailed is that well, in the doc? You know, I think Mike mentioned it at the very top of the interview. Peter. Wow. Mm.